When you think about northern Wisconsin muskie fishing, it's pretty tough not to think about the Chippewa flowage. And I have Ty Sennett here. He's guided on this system for over 20 years for muskies and for walleyes. And we're in the early fall time frame here. So we're actually going to go out over this vast system. I mean, it's the first time I fished here. And Ty's going to tell us basically the type of scenarios you want to look for to catch muskies in the early fall. And if we're lucky, we're actually going to have a Minnesota boy come yep. and fish with us a little bit too. John Hoyer actually just won a big Metro Muskie tournament in the Twin Cities. Very well known over there. Great muskie stick. So two muskie guys and one walleye guy. We're going to see how it goes. So come along with us and we'll show you the next bite. Whether you are fishing for walleyes or muskies, the Chippewa flowage of northern Wisconsin is one of the most underrated, yet productive and complex systems of water out there. Might have to throw the stocking hat on do this muskies morning. Play when it's cold? Well, we'll find out. Okay. I'm hoping they do. <laughs> Chase Parsons is no stranger to figuring out complex bites. As a past walleye tournament winner and rookie of the year, but muskie tournament champion and multi-species guy, Ty Sennett, has made it his obsessive mission to dissect every nook and cranny that he can on his home water. I've actually never seen a graph with this many waypoints. While Ty may have the chip wired in terms of structure, finding some initial action from these apex predators is still the first step to connecting the dots on what other types of areas Here's one. to look for fish. Waking up on it. Got him. You, you got him? Yep, I got him. Nice. And that means bringing along a few different types of go-to baits. Oh, I barely got him. <laughs> that cover the different kinds of structure muskies are known to frequent. Oh, no. <laughs> right there. I can just see I barely had that back hook. <laughs> that was cool. I was burning that thing. It just waked up on it and ate it. Amateur. I just nipped it. Amateur. Yeah, no, sorry. <laughs> Next one. In this late summer, early fall period, there's a lot of different lures to choose from. A lot of times it's a depth related thing, but it's also a fish activity level related thing. So when the fish are a little deeper, a bulldog style or a you know minnow style bait with a lift that's gonna get down like a vexer is gonna be a good option. But other times we're fishing some shallow water and sometimes it's a little too weedy for those baits. So we're gonna go into a bucktail or a spinner bait type thing. And if it's real shallow, we're gonna throw some top water. And when I talk about top water, sometimes the fish are aggressive and that's when you're gonna to wanna to throw a tail style bait like this pacemaker. If they're not really aggressive and and they still are hitting top water, then you want to slow down to throw a globe style bait. And if the fish are really active, then you want to throw something like a cowgirl, something that's big and loud in the water. And sometimes speed is option there. Sometimes you can reel it a little faster, get those fish to hit. And always at the end, do some figure eights. And that's a time when you might get that fish that you don't normally see to hit. The next bite is brought to you by Mercury Marine. Go boldly, tracker boats, fish the finest. Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. Berkeley, catch more fish. And Motor Guide, trolling motors engineered for anglers. Closed captioning for the next bite is provided by PowerPole, the ultimate in shallow water anchors. I'm 
When it comes to any type of fishing, musky fishing, walleye fishing, lure selection is so important. But the other thing that we really focus in on is location. And on a body of water like the Chippewa Flowage, location can get kind of confusing in terms of there being so much different structure, so many islands, just a ton of places to fish. But we're in the early fall time period and fishing for these muskies and some of the spots that you want to start looking for would be gravel bars, deeper gravel humps, and also weed lines. And the weed lines are so important to really focus in on how they lay. Many of these weed lines can be extremely large, but there might be a little cup or a little inside turn to them. And those are key spots on those weed lines to really focus in on. And the funny thing is you look at our map here, there are thousands of waypoints and it's actually pretty intimidating. Ty sent it actually, we downloaded them before we started this show here. But what he's done is he's went around the system and mapped out an icon a lot of these different structure areas that I'm talking about. So what we want to do is basically go to those three separate locations and see if we can find any fish. And then when that happens, what you'll do is you'll look throughout the rest of the system on those same areas. And that's the beauty about using these mapping charts to your advantage in this early fall time frame. Taking every chance to improve your odds with any type of fishing sort of goes without saying. Be it in searching, casting, trolling, or whatever, the same thing can be said about taking any opportunity to share a boat with good friends. How's it going? Good. Hoyer, you made it. Part-time guide and National Walleye Tour Tournament angler John Hoyer joins friends Chase Parsons and Ty Sennett as they continue to explore the Chippewa flowage waters for early fall muskies, focusing on shallower, weedy waters after their first muskie bite near surface style lures are starting to look good. Ty and I are both fishing top waters and right away he's like there's one on it and I actually looked at his bait I stopped paying attention to what I was doing and I didn't see it following it at first but right before it hit you could just see the wake. Got him. Nice. Where I come from it's usually a long drawn out process but Ty did this little move and the thing literally just reacted instantly and just completely ate the bait. Barely <laughs> see that I, I couldn't even see it. You're like fish. <laughs> Ready? <Yeah>. Nice. <laughs> yeah we got that thing in the net and it just swallowed that bait and that's the one nice thing about having you know, this day and age, the hook cutters that are out are so nice. We just snip those hooks and that fish is perfectly fine. Oh, this is a good way to start the day. I'd say. That thing just creamed it. All right, let's take a look at it. Nice, dude. <laughs> yeah. Heck yeah. That's a healthy fish. I'd say. <laughs> yeah, it came up behind it and just creamed it. Was it was so cool just watching that wake behind that top water. The cool thing is you got me throwing a top water too, so I'll probably catch one pretty quick. Now you believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Drifter tackle, rough runner. Apparently that thing thought it was breakfast. <laughs> nice. Good fish, man. All right, we'll get him on back. All right, man. Nice, nice, healthy fish. <laughs> Nice fish. He's ready to go. Sight bites. Real time fishing information from all the pros in one place at walleyechatter.com. Pontoon boats have become one of the fastest growing segments in the boating world. You know, why wouldn't they? I mean, they're the perfect family boat. We've always known that. But one of the reasons I think they're growing so fast is people are realizing that they're very, very good fishing machines too. And I think one of the key components that will turn your pontoon into that fishing machine is a motor like this MotorGuide XI5 trolling motor. It's a wireless trolling motor. There are no cables laying on the floor. Basically, you run it with a key fob or a foot pedal. Most of the time you'll use the key fob. But for example, let's say you want to take three or four people out to a rock bar uh, and fish walleyes, cast jigs to it. With this motor on your pontoon, you drive right up to the spot, you hit anchor lock, and all of you can jig that structure. Maybe you want to troll crankbaits along a big drop off. Well, you can easily do that Put your big motor in gear, use your trolling motor to go left and right, do the steering for you. Trolling across the big flat uh, with crankbaits, for example, and the bottom's pretty, pretty level and you just want to go in one direction, there's not a lot of turns, awesome. 
you hit heading lock. You can even dial in the speed, the exact speed you want to go with cruise control. So the trolling motor really can help turn this big boat into a fishing platform that's extremely efficient and will give you pinpoint boat control. So if you want to turn your pontoon into a fishing machine also, an XI-5 like this is the perfect companion to your pontoon. One thing you want to do with these globe style baits, and when I say globe style baits, it's a prop on each side that spins in a circle. There's a bunch of different varieties of them. But one thing you want to do is kind of give it a little blip halfway through the cast. And what that, when I say blip, I mean just a little surge. And when that surge is like that, you're going to hear this thing, the chirp will just vary just a little bit. And sometimes that's all it takes to get that fish to strike. Um, and a lot of times I'll do it halfway back. And then when I get near the boat, I'll do one more little bit, little surge with the rod tip. And a lot of times you give it a little bit of slack and then surge forward with your rod tip, and that'll give it that, that churning motion and noise that really triggers that fish. While Ty and Chase are both throwing topwater lures, bucktails as a subsurface lure should never be overlooked in situations like these. And neither should the key mechanics behind an effective boatside retrieve. Going into early fall, it's important to always keep a bucktail going first water. The best muskie guides in the nation lean on these things to still catch fish as the water first cools down. The most important part to remember when you're using a bucktail is that you need to appeal to a muskie's animal instincts. They're at the top of the food chain. They can eat whatever they want, whenever they want. So it's important to think about that, especially on a figure eight. I like to start with the acceleration of the boat. It's kind of your first chance to make a first impression. So I like to accelerate it to the boat and I dive it steep down to my right and I come up and I hang it high outside. A muskie's an ambush predator. They like to attack things from underneath, whether it's a topwater, a bulldog, a bucktail. And there's a big difference between allowing a muskie to swim behind your bait on a figure eight and nip at it, and they'll take that opportunity and do it. You'll lose a lot of fish because of it or when you take it away confidently and set it up where they can attack it up above their shoulder, uh, you're gonna land a lot more fish because the fish are gonna strike it a lot harder. I was just sitting back here throwing my top water and, and Ty's kind of stealing my thunder in the front of the boat, throwing a top water right in front of me. I was thinking I'd actually get a follow on a pacemaker. I was hoping to get a cool top water follow, but the thing just crushed it anyway. So, hey, we'll take it. What were, you, what were you saying about the fish not following? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just throwing a bucktail along. I'm in a topwater sandwich and Ty's in the front of the boat with a loud pacemaker. All of a sudden there's just this eruption. Big massive head shake right away. I just got out of the way. Chase was on the net. Came flying up to the front. The rest of it was pretty clean. The thing had it just completely crossways in its mouth. <laughs> oh, you're right on wow, cue. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> nice. <laughs> just destroyed it. Wow, dude, that thing <laughs> ate it. They're just creaming topwater today. Holy cow. That's crazy. This is fun. Uh, John got the hooks out actually pretty easily. Uh, pretty cool, pretty cool bite because it was one of those that at the first moment that I looked to the front of the boat, all I saw was just its massive head just almost walking out of the water. It was awesome. Nice. Ace maker. Wow. That thing <laughs> smoked that lure. Let's take a look at this. Yeah, lure. I'll just hold the net here for you. Lure. <laughs> See what we got right here. He was not messing around. <laughs> There's no following or nothing. I saw there. when you're like, got him. I, I looked up at you, and all I saw was just its head just. <laughs> just check this one out. <laughs> nice. Oh, chubby guy. Hey, Wisconsin get, color get there. Get those teeth away from my face. <laughs> <one. Did you laughs> I thought you've handled these things before. <laughs> that thing knew how to eat a top water, is yes, all I'm saying. Did. Wow. <laughs> Extremely angry. Can we get her back? Yeah. All right, yeah, let's do that. Wow, that one was entertaining. I think she's ready to go. Oh yeah. See ya. The next bite is brought to you by Mercury Marine. Go boldly. Tracker Boats. Fish the finest. Bass Pro Shops. Your adventure starts here. Berkeley. Catch more fish. Mustad. Stay sharper longer. Lawrence. Find, navigate, dominate. Motor Guide Trolling Motors, engineered for anglers. Strike King, legacy of domination for 50 years. And Power Pole, swift, silent, secure. Hot 
topics, leading information and tackle and techniques to make you a better angler. Presented by Mercury. One of the most important pieces of equipment on this whole boat is that motor. You got no motor, you don't get to go fishing. So you want to keep that motor running well and you got to have information about that motor to keep it running well. Well thankfully Mercury has just come out with two different things to help you get information about that motor right out on the water. The first one is called Vessel View Mobile. Now what Vessel View Mobile is, is basically you've got a wiring harness here that's got a little module in it. And this hooks up to a SmartCraft network for your engine. Now that's sounds like something brand new and just out, but actually it's been out since like 2003. So you can hook it up to just about any engine all the way down to 40 horse and get this information. Now that module is going to send information to your smartphone. What you have is an app and what it's got on this is information about your engine. Now, it's got standard information like coolant temperature and then the battery and things like that, but it's also got more than that. For example, if you have a fault, your horn goes off during the day, you can actually go on this, look at the faults, and actually get information about what you should do about that fault. Uh, say uh, another thing that you want to do is keep better track of how much fuel you're using. There's a fuel management system that allows you to put in how much gas you, you put into your tank and the engine keeps track of how much is burned so you always know much more precisely how much gas you've got left to run that engine during the day. The last thing that a lot of people don't think about is what kind of maintenance should be done on that engine. Well because this app has got engine hours right on it, it can tell you exactly what things have got to be done and you can see from my screen I got a few to do. If you need to find a dealer, again because you're on the internet you can go right out and find the closest dealer to help you out if you're having a problem. So that's the app and Vesselview Mobile. The second thing they've got is something called Vessel View Link. Now this goes right in your boat, this, this box is mounted right in, you're going to add some power to it, and then this cable would go into your NMEA network. And what that's for is to send information to your Lowrance units. Now it's going to add some functionality to that HES unit and to your big engine. First of all, eco mode, the engine is going to keep track of your miles per gallon at different uh, settings, and now it's going to tell you, hey here's the trim you should be at, and here's the RPMs you should be at so that you can get the optimal fuel economy. Another mode that I like on there is something called troll control. You're going to be able to finally adjust the RPMs up and down of that big engine to get to just that right trolling speed. Although these two systems are kind of the same and that they give you some of that gauge information, that app is going to allow you to connect to the internet to get a lot more information about things, whereas that vessel view link is going to let you control the engine right through your HDS screens. We'll see you out on the water. Top water bites are not only fun for the more visible strikes, but they can be one of the easiest lures to cast and retrieve for muskies. One thing I want to talk to you guys about is tail rotating baits and how to tune them in in different you know, weather conditions and different circumstances. Fish in the net for instance and it might get the bait out of tune. This tail rotating bait here is a pacemaker and it's similar to a lot of the others on the market where it's got a prop here that will make the bait, the tail rotate. And one thing you can do is you can open up the cup on that like that for instance, and undoing that cupping action will make the blade spin faster. And when it spins faster, it's not gonna pop real loud, but in the wind, I actually like that because it'll rotate really fast, throw a lot of water in the air. But when you're in calm water, I'll actually take that blade and cup it a little more and it'll pop real loud. And that'll trigger a fish that's in calm water. Um, don't be afraid to adjust these because a lot of times it takes one little adjustment to put a fish in the boat that you know you might think you're going to screw the bait up by adjusting it when in reality you're going to put more fish in the boat. There's no denying that at times casting for muskies can be a little like watching paint dry. Cast after cast after cast can easily disarm any angler to accidentally miss what might be the only follow of the day. We're back in this bay here and and I'm just throwing a top water over some weeds and it, it was one of the very few moments where I wasn't watching the bait come in and I, I almost thought I heard Ty like squeak or do something up front. I don't even know what it was, but all of a sudden the rod just ooh, a buck got ripped right out of my hands. Big, right. big fish. That's a hog. You said you were going to get one, yeah, Chase. Yeah, I did. You called it. <laughs> that exploded on Oh, my gosh, yeah. <laughs> so I quick went for the net. It was a nice battle. He brought it in with his rod down low. I got to the boat, and it was 
pointing right towards me, like, perfect, let's do this. I put the net out and it was like, no, not right now. And it just took off, aerial, uh, then Chase turned it back around and we put it in the net. So. <laughs> How about now, Buster? Yes! yes! Boy, Chase! <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, that. Dude. There you go. Nice. Well, that's kind of what top water fishing is all about. Chase, I don't know what Chase was doing. I don't think we, any of us know what Chase is doing most of the time, but easy to net, easy to unhook. Well, I wouldn't say easy to net. You got to love it. I can't believe that thing's got one hook in it. <laughs> Actually, it's going to come out easy. That's a good thing. Yeah, the guy who fought it did a really good job getting it in then, right? You know, you actually <laughs> look like you knew what you were doing. Well, Stillwater got it done this time. <laughs> that was nice. Let's see what we got here. That's a pretty fish. We're in a little, <laughs> little clearer water here. It's got some good markings. Here we got go. Her. Check this one out. <laughs> wow, what a beauty. <laughs> <laughs> that oh, that was awesome. <laughs> Such a good bite, too. Wow, there's sweet markings on that That's thing. top water. I wasn't paying attention. Imagine that. <laughs> I think how to eat a top water. That was nice. Oh, that's fun. Should we get her back? Yeah. Yep. All right. Cool. <laughs> All I can say is Wisconsin, Wisconsin muskies do not like top water baits. They are mad at them. Oh, that thing is sweet. I think he's ready to go. See ya, friend. Mike oh. Checker, the rim and rhyme oh. wrecker. Rocks from here to Mecca. Boom, shaka, rocka, lecker. I got the rhymes that'll rock your cradle. <laughs> <laughs> Can't live on bite soup, Ty. At least I'm getting some bites. <laughs> <laughs> bog, 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 bog. You'll never catch a muskie if you aren't singing the bog song. Right. I got a little aggressive with that one. <laughs> a little aggressive. A little long on the cast? Yep. Better at not too. Better at walleye fishing. Uh, we don't know uh, that yet. We know that. I mean, we just know Are that. Are you better than your dad? Yes. Okay. <laughs> the next bite would like to thank Treeland Resorts and professional muskie angler and guide Ty Sennett. For more information on Treeland Resorts, visit treelandresorts.com. And for more information on Ty, visit tysennett.com.